Well, I'm a chartered management accountant by training, uh, which means I'm trained to work on finances and numbers inside businesses. So I understand tax, but I'm not a tax expert, and I don't audit. I don't want to tick other people's work. I want the one to be actually producing all the audit files yeah. and producing and driving businesses going forward. So that's a chartered management account. I've been doing that for over 30 years, and for the last few years under my own label and working for myself under P2P Finance Limited. Okay. So P2P Finance, what kind of businesses do you work for? Working on at the moment are businesses that are either looking for funding or looking to sell their businesses or getting themselves back into, into a shape where they can sell it and they can control it as they grow. Okay. So from your point of view, what is important for a business in terms of financial planning and being ready to take the next step in business? The most important thing about any business is the main man. Who is the actual leader? It's the leadership. So when, when business is looking for funding, from your perspective, what are the most important key areas that they need to really address in their business plan? Well, it needs a multitude of skills. So you need to know how to sell where your vision. You need to have the right documentation to actually attract somebody and to, to, to buy into your dream. Yeah. But from my England, where I get involved, is you then need the numbers to back up that dream and to, to back up that picture. Because any business, it talks in the language of numbers. And if your forecast, if your projections for the future don't talk in numbers, then you're not going to get anywhere. So investors basically can't read your plan. They want to know they're going to put X amount in and they're going to, you know, you're promising that you're going to give them Y back. Are they ever going to see that Y? Right? Can you actually do what you say you're going to do? It's okay saying, yes, I'm going to grow my business to a million pounds in three years. Is that feasible? Is it work? Do the numbers stack up? Does it actually look realistic? They need help around their business and support. Absolutely. Because uh, a business, when you start off a business, whether it be as a sole trader or whatever, you create a new entity. And that entity is a, has got a legal right of its own. So what are the most important documents in a business plan? That needs to be the, the starting point is the goal. What's the, what is the goal purpose? All right. So what's the, what is the dream? What's the goal? What's the get out? All right. And also then how the journey. So if you think if you're going on a car journey, you start off with your current location. You dream where you want to get to. You look on a map all right, of how you're going to get there. Yeah. All right, and you draw a roadmap. That's the financial plan. But the vision of driving where you want to get to and all the tools you're going to use to get there, that's all important. So it's all encompassing. What are the key elements of in a business plan that an investor would expect to see? A, he wants to be able to see, understand the vision, the dream. Two, he wants to understand whether the, the team are strong enough to deliver and whether it's actually feasible. All right. And what the likelihood, the level of risk that he's going to put in, if he puts his half a million pounds in or a million pounds in, what's the likelihood of, getting, of him getting a return? Yes. Risk is always a big factor in deciding whether to invest in a company or not for an investor. So, looking from your point of view, how would you say you could minimize the risk of investing in, in a startup or a growing company? You can't minimize the risk. What you can do with the financial numbers is to quantify the risk. What I mean by that all right, is that no one's got a, a, a crystal ball. All a business plan in terms of financials is based on, if you have a set of assumptions that we're going to do X, Y, and Z, a financial plan will then give you the likely outcomes of those decisions. All right? but, and then that will give you the likely, likelihood, if all this comes off, what the likelihood is of getting your return and to achieving what you want to do. It doesn't change the risk, but it quantifies what level of risk you're taking. Having that preparation and plan would make the case stronger? It's all um, down to this, isn't it? Because making uh, reactionary decisions away from, um, oh, I forgot the word. Um, uh, well, you, you know, you think proactive decisions. So this is, we, financials help, actually help with a proactive decision making. The more you have time to think about your decisions and to weigh up your decisions, 
statistically, the better they'll be. Too many people run businesses based on reactionary decisions. So when you see entrepreneurs and business owners, what other mistakes do you quite often see that they're making in, inside their business when it comes to finance and money? Well, when you start up a business, you don't have money resources. So you tend to have to do everything from being the strategist all the way down to bottle washer. But as you grow a business, you have to start to let go. You yes. can't do everything. And the biggest problem I have is that business owners, they don't want to let go. And they've got this misconception that by saving money, right, they'll improve their profit. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. And if you just concentrate on cutting costs all the time and not spending money, your business will not go anywhere. What are your three top tips for a business owner? Understand, right, number one is understand your numbers. All right? It doesn't matter whether you've got this aversion to numbers. If you've got an aversion to numbers and you don't understand numbers, you can do two things. Not start your business, but get in somebody who can actually explain them to you. Because you can't ignore them, but you might need a translator. Right, to explain what your company is saying. Because you speak English or Latvian or whatever language, but your company speaks one language, numbers. And you need a translator in to actually understand what it's saying to you. Second point, if you're going to start a business, is you've got to learn to listen. And also and to know your own limitations and understand where you need assistance. Those are the top two. And the third one? I could have a list of ten, but this is a short video. <laughs> Perfect. How have you in the past helped turn around businesses? Several ways. Um, it's usually doing something which well, business owners haven't been had to do it before. And so they've been many ways. I've worked in the um, corporate world and I've worked in small companies and I've worked with start with startups. And so my broad spectrum of experience right, can be is a, is a massive um, plus to any um, knowledge pool for any company. Um, I don't know everything, don't pretend I know everything. I know what I'm good at, and I also know what I'm bad at, and which things I prefer not to do if I don't have to. doesn't mean that I will conduct, well, do them, but I know what I don't like. And business owners need to be the same. You can't grow a business on your own. And I can give you some examples of if that is what you'd like. Yes. Yes? Okay. Let's say that. When I was in my corporate world, um, I worked for this PLC in their training company, and they just spent all this money putting in this new system, but things weren't working. They couldn't understand. They were running on Elvis courses, but the profitability wasn't there, and we couldn't understand what was going on. And purely by sorting out the journey. Do you remember the only the journey of understanding what A and B and C, where that relied to, the clearing up what needed to be accrued, what was dead wood and what wasn't, some of the profitability and more importantly, we sorted out where our invoicing was going wrong, where we were missing invoices and where we were invoicing the wrong people, and I sorted all that out to suddenly we were actually getting cash coming into the business rather and knowing how much money we were making and where we actually stood on each course. So it's not good enough to stick your head in the sand and hope that numbers will work itself out? If you stick your out. head in the sand, you will die. Your You'll company die. will die. It's as simple as that. And at the moment, I'm working on a project. That was a few years ago. I'm currently working on a project. Um, some businessmen over in the West Country have got a new product. They've spent a million pounds developing it so far and they're now looking to stage to move it on to the next stage. They've got their first clients, they move on to the next stage, but they didn't know how all right, to present it in a way where they could attract investors. Yes. And some people I work with, uh, you'll be one of them, Ramonda, we've put the, the vision down on paper and I'm, we're putting the numbers down, which has passed all the due diligence, which shows how we're going to grow the product, how we're going to say who the likely client and which product mix, and, and actually show where, if an investor puts in his half a million pounds, 
what we want to use it for and the likely outcomes from using that money. So depending on their growth projections, sales, yeah. these are the things that yeah. they would be looking at. Where they will be looking at. We've been, my numbers have been gone through with a fine tooth comb. And I know I have, you have a particular thing about balance sheets. <laughs> yeah, most people, they try and when they look at their uh, business, they look at their accounts, Majority of small businesses, you will put all your invoices, receipts into a plastic carrier bag and take them once a quarter to your accountant so we can sort out your VAT. And you'd know all your accounts. That's one step. All right? And at a certain level, that can work. All right? At another level, right, where you're going to actually you start to look at your PL, people try and control businesses through their profit and loss account. Now, I can actually control a p &L to say whatever I want it to say. Yes. Right. But where you really control a business is by controlling your balance sheet items. That's how you control a business. Now, what's the balance sheet? I hear some of your um, that would people be say. Good. Balance sheet is all the stuff which is it's all your debtors, creditors, your balances of your bank, and so on. And um, it's um, all the items that you need to understand who owes you money and who should have paid you. How much stock are you holding? Is it old stock, new stock? Who do you owe money to? <coughs> and who, who do you owe, you know, who can you put off? Controlling your things controls your things. The company lives and dies by its cash flow. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can't control your cash flow for your profit and loss account. So you absolutely. Because you can report to, a sale, yeah. but you may not be paid for that sale. So for me, the balance sheet is always the key document. Understand your balance sheet, <coughs> and you can control your PL, and then the PL yeah. just reports on how you're doing. Yes. I think we might need to have a, another session on balance sheet itself. It's a whole topic. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's all in numbers. Yes. I speak English, and I speak numbers. It's the only two languages That's I speak. <laughs> well, I have another one. I speak yeah. Lithuanian. Yeah. I can ask for a beer in Spanish, though. That's good that's enough. Good but enough. that's it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for your insights and just sharing your knowledge how people can really control and manage their businesses through their financial Absolutely health, no problem really. at all. I'm here to actually help people succeed. And your business is? P2P Finance Limited. Okay, fantastic. I'm a little cottage industry, but can help companies of all sizes.